Peace, love, and light, beautiful souls. We have a deep, deep reading laid out here. It's actually going to include some karmatics. So brace yourself in case there's something here that's triggering. But as always, like I always say, we ain't here to just poke the bear. We're also here for the solutions, right? And the encouragements towards the solutions. With that being said, this is a general reading. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. This group feels, or the groups, feel very pacific. There are some pacific things coming in here that I feel like are unavoidable to talk about. And some stuff that is so personal, I can't touch on it because, again, I don't do free personal readings. If you need a reading, you can come for that. If you need a soul guidance session or a shadow work session, you can pay for that too. But as far as getting too, too, too personal on a reading that's for the collective, that's a no-no. But there are some areas that are just unavoidable because of the karmatic side over here, which is probably just slightly cut off camera because I need like an actual camera I can <laughs> zoom out with properly. We have the divine feminine's feelings here and the divine masculine's feelings here. I'm going to break this down and sometimes go back and forth between the cards, right? But again, it's very important because this is a general reading. Only take what resonates. Leave what doesn't. Don't try to claim nothing as your situation if it's not of your situation. People try to do that. It's not good. It tends to backfire. This is about guidance and clarity. Not making up something. No. Guidance and clarity. So we're going to start off with the Divine Masculines. There's an intense hunger here from your Divine Masculine. Your love transforms them. This is very powerful in this whole setup. The reason I say that is because, number one, I feel like this group of feminines, you're starting to get yourself centered. You're starting to understand this union. At first, it just seemed kind of wild and crazy. You might have even been resentful towards it at one time, but now you're starting to kind of understand this whole journey about divine masculines, divine feminines, twin flames, soulmates, all of that. You're starting to get it. And because of that, you're a bit more open-minded to how things unfold. You're not so stuck in one lane, stuck in one thought process, right? As this happens, you're also realizing that a huge part of the journey, one of the biggest parts of the journey is working on yourself, getting you right, getting yourself situated. As you do that, however, it starts to wake your divine masculine up. Think of karmatic situations sometimes, because this, this isn't in every case, but it's a majority. It's like the, the masculines are in a fog, a haze, a cloud, right? And when you get yourself together and you're doing it in a loving sense with no negative intent towards them, that love is the light that shines through that fog. It's the light that, that shows them, oh, I'm, I'm in a forest and the pathway is right there. But, however, masculines, because I know masculines are going to come across this at some point. The issue is this being extraterritorial because it's in an unhealthy extent. The reason that this is an issue, other than the fact that it's to an unhealthy extent, you guys have karmatic situation and karmatic people that you're dealing with, karmatic relationships, right? While you're dealing with that, and as you were dealing with that, you were being super territorial with your divine feminine. It's kind of like saying, I'm going to go in the candy shop and I'm going to just eat all the candy. You just stand by the door and watch me eat all the candy. You can't touch none. You can't do what I do, but I'm going to go do. See what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you, like you get where I'm going with that? It's like in, in feminists, you know you're masculine. So you know if this was your masculine doing this. I feel like amongst this group, some of you were doing it to that extent, some weren't. But as you guys were going through this karmatic situation or as karmatic things were happening, you kept wanting your divine feminine to be or act a certain way, but you weren't acting or being that way. You are you don't want her to date, but you're dating. You don't want her in a karmatic relationship, which isn't so bad, but you get what I mean. You don't want her to have any type of ties to anyone else but you at the same time. You have ties with a karmatic partner. <laughs> like this gave your divine feminine a really negative viewpoint of you at one point in time during that karmatic experience, right? But 
I do feel like some of you are starting to learn that that wasn't good. I feel like it's a bad habit, though. It's it's, it's something that started because the T here, the T is some of these divine masculines, when they were dealing with the karmatic, their divine feminines did not know. They didn't know that they had one. They didn't know they were dealing with one or that they had dealt with one before. So all that time you're being extraterritorial and you're like, you can't do this, you can't do that. It was because you were busy putting up with a karmatic person. The same, understand, karmatic relationships are about karma. Lessons, karmatic lessons. This isn't the equivalent of, oh, he was just cheating with the girl down the street. No, 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 no. These are people who they go through certain things with because they're meant to learn. They're, they're meant to learn how to step into a better form of who they are so that they can be a true divine masculine. And they only tend to go through it when there's something in their past or something in their energy and frequency that isn't balanced. It isn't right. And so these low vibrational frequencies come in. I want to clarify something, though. Most of the time when you hear people say karmatics, they're talking about two types. You see, you have karmatics that you can learn lessons from, but they're not toxic. Those those are relationships that, you know, they end. It's not always drama filled. It's just, look, you go your way, I go my way. Or maybe we're cool, but we're just not together, whatever. And then there's the toxics. I personally don't like calling the first ones toxic. They're, I don't even like calling them karmatic. I just say that they're lessons. They're re lesson relationships. When it's karmatics, I think of the toxic ones. Right. These are the ones who plot, manipulate. It's not just, oh, I'm with you and we don't work and we go through hardships and we bang heads. It's I'm going out of my way to make your life hell. That's toxic karmatics. And that's what we have over here in this corner. Now, this particular group of karmatics are aware karmatics. So what that means is they're aware of spiritual existence and spiritual state of being it's not far-fetched for them to be the kind to try to put a veil or some type of block over the masculine in a spiritual sense while also wishing harm on the divine feminine or trying to even mimic or copy the divine feminine and i'll probably like i on my podcast i can break down the whole mimic thing and all that because very few people talk about that but in this instance, I don't feel it was so much the mimicking kind. It was a karmatic that was very aware that the masculine that they were dealing with had a divine feminine. And very determined to make sure that that didn't go well. To keep chaos between the two of you. To keep communication from happening. Now, another group I'm picking up here. Because as I, as I tell you guys, I pick up a lot of groups and I'm, I'm narrowing it down. Another group I pick up here. Some of these karmatics were exes. There was someone that these masculines dealt with and they dealt with for a while before you were even in the picture. They probably were on and off with them a lot. And let me let me clarify again. I do not count side chicks as a relationship. That is a side chick. That I'm not with the whole changing the terms of what stuff was originally supposed to mean. When it comes to that, it throws everything off of balance and then everybody be tripping. A side chick is exactly that. The chick on the side. They are not a relationship. <laughs> like They're really not supposed to ever develop to a relationship. It just sometimes happens when the masculines get caught up. Now, every now and then, a karmatic can be the side chick, right? And that's how they get in. That's how they're able to get up under the masculine skin, right? But in this case, we're talking about a bona fide relationship. Someone they got close to. Someone they were exclusive with. At one point in time, even if they were on and off, even if at some point in the relationship it just went all bad, it was still someone they were with. The reason this is important is because in that Pacific group, we have a karmatic, divine feminine gone rogue, stepping out of their divinity. We have a karmatic that knows something about these masculines past. She got, it, it's something that when they were together, the masculine trusted the karmatic with they they trusted them to know this because at the time they thought that it was love or they thought that they could and now it's used to trigger them it's it's used to guilt them it's used to trigger them it's used to to put them in a negative state of mind or being about themselves and when that happens they act out and when they act out it leads to conflict with you
makes them extraterritorial of you, makes it more likely for an argument or a fight to take place with you because they're triggered by what this karmatic did. So I'm going to be fair and I'm going to say not all of these masculines are sleeping with the karmatic, even some of the ones that kept the karmatic secret. It's more like, you know, some, some people know that they're dating or dealing with people or trying to deal with someone that doesn't want them talking to their ex, period right? It's like, it's a thing that they understand. So whatever this person uses to get them to communicate, they don't want you to know about it because they feel like you're going to take that as, oh, you, you're doing such and such with that person. We're not cleansing the way the ones that were actually doing some stuff behind your back, but I'm being fair here to let you know some of these masculines weren't, they weren't doing the hanky panky, but it was like every time this karmatic called, they would use this trigger, this, this pool that they have and it would just make the masculine do stuff out of guilt out of frustration and whatever it is is something they don't want you to know about it's not that it's not that they don't want you to know because they think that it's detrimental to the relationship per se it's more like they trusted this person with it and maybe one or two other people and it always backfired so even though they know that the union with you is different they just don't trust sharing that information because if ever an argument happened and you used it or you said whatever it was, it would it would really it it would shatter them. It'd be very painful. So whatever it is, this karmatic messed their head up by using it, right? And your your masculines, however, they're very spiritually aware of themselves. These aren't masculines who start going through the journey and they kind of know things and they kind of don't know things these masculines here they're very spiritually aware the reason i say that is because we have the i am waiting for you to remember right sometimes this card comes out meaning that you know y'all were in love or you had intense bond and something made you separate i do feel like some of you are in some type of separation or break and they want you to remember the good times, like remember how you loved me, remember how I loved you, blah, blah, blah. But in my readings, when this card comes out, it speaks to energetically, it speaks to other dimensions. Do you remember a past life? Do you remember the dream that I sent you? Do you remember? It's speaking to things that are beyond just this form of existence. Now that may sound out there for y'all, but understand that you're sitting here watching a reading, having your whole life break down for you in cards, <laughs> right? So the key is to be open-minded because some things exist whether you choose to believe in them or not, and your divine masculine is very aware. So this is someone who in dreams, you might be having dreams, especially if you're in separation, where you guys are intimate and the place is very specific. It's not just your bedroom. It's not just their bedroom. It's like, it's somewhere else. Right. It's a very specific place and you wake up and the sensations feel so real. Like, you know, you know that that person isn't even maybe like in the same city as you right now, but you feel like they were laying right there. Like astral projections, real, my loves, you know, that they're sending you those frequencies. But this card is saying, go back further. This card is saying, go into the fifth dimension with me. Go back further than that. Go back into the other lives we shared because twin flame bonds and soulmate bonds. Twin flames are, are mirrors, right? That is, you always hear people say that. That's very true. And soulmates are strong connections. Both can exist through several different timelines, right? So your divine masculine might have been dreaming about you and figured out, wait a minute, I'm always dreaming about us in this specific setting, in, in this place. We're speaking this language. What's going on here? And they might have done some digging. They might have done some research or they just went within and started realizing what this connection is, that this is a spiritual connection. It's like a spiritual marriage, right? Which is another reason they feel so territorial of you because in their mind, right? It's like, we're together in all these other planes. We're the, we've been together all these other times, but masculines have to realize if you're dealing with the karmatic or putting up with the karmatic's way, it, it just doesn't make sense to demand certain things from the feminine so strongly in that regard so this is an issue i feel some are working on some have to work on and some they've already started to cleanse it out the more that they feel your love and they feel your forgiveness and they feel your connection the the easier it is for them to calm down because sometimes that extra territorial feeling it comes out of fear if i keep putting up with this karmatic my divine feminine will leave me or stop messing with me because you both got free will 
regardless of the connection, right? You both have free will. And the stars will keep putting you in places to fix things. But if, if one of you decides to go rogue, like some of these karmatic does, it's not going to leave the other one abandoned and alone. They'll be able to find somebody, right? So it's, it's important to really stay positive about your connection, not to be too attached to an outcome. Not, don't really be attached to an outcome at all. Just know that the person you have is yours. Understand that. Understand that the process they're going through right now is because they need to learn lessons because you don't want them bringing in that toxicity that they have to go through with the karmatic into the relationship with you. Going into the divine feminines, because we spent a while on the masculines, You've touched my soul in every sh in every way, shape, and form, right? Some of you feminists, like I said, they, they're waiting for you to remember past experiences, past lives, dreams, astral project, all of that. They're waiting for, they're trying to like trigger that out of you. That's typically what this card represents whenever I'm doing readings, right? And notice all these hands. It's really supposed to be the same masculine's hands, right? I also feel like the reason that, that this is coming in is because when, when this karmatic energy was here, you felt it. You may not have known right away what it was. I do feel like some of you knew that this was a karmatic energy that you were picking up on. But for those of you who didn't, you just know that whenever the masculine was tripping, heavy energy was around whenever they were depressed or being angry or aggressive it was always this heavy burdensome energy around and you probably wanted to just be done with the connection like you know what i'm done you're tripping i don't have time for this and you kept being drawn back and kept being drawn back and the reason for that being was because at some point you started realizing i can't run from this this is something else this isn't your typical, you've been in relation, some of you have been in relationships before, this isn't your first rodeo and you've never felt anything like this. You cannot explain this. This isn't the same as being attached to somebody because you feel that you have to be. This isn't the same as thinking, you know, if I, it, it's just different. It's just different. I'm not even gonna try to go down that long list, right? And again, Stuff is happening in the fifth dimension. They're doing things because we have here erotic spiritual pleasures. Right? Things are going down in the fifth dimension whenever you guys are able to truly link up and feel the core of your connection. I just saw 1515 and 1717. Those numbers may mean something to you guys when they're brought down to the single digit they may mean something you may be seeing them a lot you can look up the meaning for those numbers i might start incorporating those things a little bit more in my videos but that there's this pull to come towards them and you realize that when you feel it it just feels like they know every part of you like they've and, and again this is so deep that's why we have spiritual pleasures here it's a soul deep connection a soul deep connection they don't ever want you to forget they're waiting on you to remember it more <laughs> because they feel stronger when you remember it more but now we're going to hop over into what 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 created the problem right when now that you guys are connecting right now that you're you're starting to balance out they need to work on this issue here but it's coming around it's it's, it's bringing itself into conclusion the karmatics are angry as hell and they're a hater right now they can't stand when y'all communicate. And remember, I said these karmatics are spiritually aware. They're not just lollygagging around, just thinking negative things and voila, you know, voila, it happens. No, these are karmatics that they purposely trigger the masculine. They purposely try to put negative vibrations on you on purpose. And when that doesn't work and they can feel that you're communicating with each other, they're hot. They're heated at it. You see the hatred? burning in their eyes like ah, oh, how dare you type of energy right something that is rarely explained at least i rarely see explained so i'm gonna i'm gonna break it down when you are a divine feminine <clears throat> that's aware right you may not know too much about anything but you understand that you're a divine feminine you have a twin flame there's vibrations spirits etc there's a certain layer of understanding for protection that you automatically know to put around yourself, right? 
It could be something simple, burning candles, crystals. When you are, however, unaware and then you deal with low vibrational feelings like depression or anger, things like that, things that the karmatic can manipulate and twist, that's when karmatics can influence your relationships. When they can feel through the masculine because they use the masculine as the tool. When they can tap into you through the masculine and feel, oh, this is a divine feminine that doesn't know her power, or this is a divine feminine that's depressed or dealing with this, that, and the third. They can use your masculine to manipulate your energy field, and they can try to tap in and send negative vibes your way. It's important to remember you are you and that your intent, your own personal intent on yourself that's a strong level of protection in and of itself. You can add crystals, you can add your oils and whatnot, but having that understanding that I am the that I am. I'm not a copy. You cannot imitate me. It's important to have that kind of strength in your belief system. Don't be naive and don't underestimate a karmatic, especially one that is under that, that's aware of energy. Even if they seem a little dull or slow, you do not underestimate them. But you have to step into understanding your own power. I do feel like some of these feminines, a lot of this was new to you. You were starting to understand, but it was still new to you. I feel like some of these masculines actually knew more than the feminines did. And so the karmatics every now and then was trying to send negative thoughts, negative vibrations, negative feelings. So that heaviness that you were feeling when the masculine wasn't even around, that was the karmatic trying to channel into you, trying to tap into your energy. Never allow it, right? Don't, don't ever allow it. Don't ever believe that you're not strong enough to put up a proper barrier against it. It can be hard for, in, for anyone to do it when it's a divine feminine that's tapped in because you have your own protection team. But when you're not aware or as aware, you know, your guides could be sending you all kinds of signs and you don't pay attention, like the numbers. They could be sending you signs of, hey, don't go here, put protection up here, watch, don't talk to your masculine right now because they're dealing with that, da, da, da. and you'll ignore it all or not recognize it all. It's important to pay attention to those signs. It's important to be aware of your energy. When you feel that heaviness and you know that it doesn't end, and again, you know your situation, you know what your masculine's energy feels like. You know what your family's energy feels like. So when that heaviness comes around, it's like, this isn't of me and this isn't of anyone I know, you cast that on. You send that back from whence it came from because that's that karmatic trying to tap in to create a problem, right? And this is why people say, be careful who you sleep with. It's not about judging and all that other extra. When you are sleeping with people, you are sharing energy fields. When the masculine is messing with the karmatic for a hot second, leaves them, goes through whatever on and off with them, comes over to you, lays with you. He's sharing that frequency with the both of you. And therefore you're both fair sharing frequencies. So you're picking up on each other. It's actually helping the karmatic job, right? And this is why sometimes, you know, spirit, you've probably seen plenty of readings where people say it, spirit will separate you on purpose because it's like, look, what they're dealing with is rubbing off on you. They need to go over there by themselves in that corner, get that together <laughs> before they come back to you. I feel like some of the masculines here are not sleeping with the karmatic. Like I said, the karmatic triggers them through something they know about them. I do feel like some of these masculines have kids with these karmatics. If that's the case, then you know who this is. You are the, the moment the reading started, you knew who that was because you know if they're dealing with a toxic baby mama, right? One that uses the child like a heavy, heavy hanging over their head, right? And they just... They make up excuses in their mind, sometimes due to their own traumas from their past, to keep them from putting their foot down when it comes to the karmatic doing that. And so what the karmatic does with those situations is she puts the masculine in a bad mood. Because she knows if the divine masculine is in a bad mood, where is he going to take that bad mood home to? You, the divine feminine. Now y'all are arguing over stupid stuff. Who didn't wash the dishes? Who forgot the keys in the door? S simple stuff that's like a up, oh, yeah, okay, it's frustrating, but it ain't that deep. Y'all are arguing and going at it like somebody ran over someone's puppy. 
And after the argument, you can't figure out why it even went that deep because she's putting him in a bad mood and that bad mood makes him defensive. It makes them argumentative, you know, and it just creates a problem. And, and if they're doing it through the kids, something with the kids, like, oh, one minute he can see the kids and he can't because she, she thinks he's with you. They're not even in a relationship together, but she's using and he won't take her to court, for example, or any of that. Because in his mind, it's, I don't want to take the kid from the mom or it's all kinds of different excuses that at the end of the day, if he understood, and this is what I meant when I said there are some specific things I can't go into detail with, but there's a thing called using child energy. It's a very toxic thing to do. And when you have a karmatic, especially the mother, using a child in a toxic sense energetically, as well as like a heavy hanging over your head physically, it creates problems not only within the masculine, but within that child. So that whole not wanting to, you know, be argumentative with the karmatic and not wanting to step on their toes. Sometimes you need to put your foot down and say, listen, we're not playing this game no more. This has to stop, right? For those where it's the karmatic knows a secret about the, the masculine, they use that secret to put the masculine in a bad mood. I feel like the karmatic might know how to contact the divine feminine in that scenario. You may not know them personally in that scenario in the secret one, but they know how to get some info to you if they had to, maybe through social media, maybe through a friend. So that might be the threat. The threat might be if you don't come over and do this or t talk to this person or talk to me, I'm going to tell her ba 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 ba. And because they know themselves, they're not ready to, to confess whatever this is to you. They know if the karmatic says it, they're going to twist it, turn it, make it sound like something that's not right? Especially those who were talking to the karmatic and were having sex behind the divine feminist back. Oh, they're going to add all kinds of layers to that, <laughs> right? So, but I feel like, again, the secret is something else. It's something very deep and hurtful to the masculine. And he, he, they're just not comfortable with sharing it right now. These karmatics are ugly monsters. They have a beautiful appearance. They have a model-like or just I've, I'm sensing actually funny enough and this is this is interesting I'm actually sensing a a Pacific karmatic energy coming in right now they're very very beautiful but they're yeah they're very beautiful they have like short hair short short curly hair or short hair I'm like I'm picking up on some of their act you know appearances but for most of the karmatics we're talking about here, they're very attractive, you know, and people kind of like take their looks as being seductive and innocent. But in reality, they're this beast. <laughs> I'm like, they're this like, like, you see the demonic hand, like they're this monster on the inside. But people look at them on the surface and go, oh, look how beautiful they are. Oh, um, they're so innocent and cute because sometimes they give these innocent eyes or sometimes they give the sultry look. And so they might be taken as like sultry and, you know, nobody takes time to look deeper to see all the other madness. I feel like whoever that short haired karmatic is there, they have pretty eyes. They're the ones with pretty eyes and people just kind of get hypnotized because they don't look into the soul of the eye. They just go, oh, she has pretty colored eyes and hello, she took it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how he got caught up. <laughs> because again, these karmatics are relationships. That's how they got caught up, falling for the face and not paying attention to what was deeper. Whereas with the divine feminine, you're beautiful. They fell for the connection they felt with you first. I also feel like many of these masculines have really intense eyes too. I'm seeing like intense browns. You know, when the sun hits it, it's a very bright, intense brown. I'm seeing some of them have gray eyes. Like the person here is like these really gray, intense eyes. It's just some of the, the features. You know you're masculine, right? How did the feminine and masculine energy feel when this karmatic energy was at its heaviest. Well, divine feminists were over it, especially with y'all being territorial masculines. They said, I'm not codependent on you. I just rather fucks with you. That's a really nice way of saying they'll lay with you sometimes, <laughs> you know, 
or just chill with you, but they really weren't looking for a relationship because they got tired of feeling this heavy energy, especially those who knew that you were dealing with a karmatic. They, they knew that this karmatic was calling you, bugging you, or they knew that the karmatic was the baby mama, whatever it may have been in the situation. They were just over it. And because of that territorial energy, it came along with this, like, I can tell you what to do. And the film's like, no, you can't. I'm not, got, I'm not codependent on you. You can't tell me shit type of energy. Right? But they started to realize as they went through their own personal awakening, as they started also feeling that deep connection that we have here. Notice that in this image, it's like the same woman, same dress. Right? They started realizing this is a guided union because every time they tried to leave, ignore you, go a separate way, masculines, they kept being drawn right back. <laughs> like every time without fail, move to a different state. Somehow you're there. <laughs> like and we're not talking, you know, like you're purposely necessarily driving out your way <laughs> to run into them. Though I do feel like some of these divine masculines are a bit of a stalker still. Like, it, it's just they kept ending up where you were in the same grocery store. It just, it just kept happening. And when it would happen, you guys would mess around. And remember what I said earlier. Messing around with the divine feminine, putting up with the karmatic, and or sleeping or messing around with them at the same time was sharing in that heavy energy. It was all bad. So a separation at some point happened or is happening but it's starting to make you guys realize what this union really is and have a better appreciation of it the divine feminists were realizing okay that's why i keep being drawn back because this is a guided union this is something that is that's been set in motion long before we realized what it was right divine masculines at some point felt like the divine feminists might have been rushing them because they said Please let go of timing. It's causing delays. Right? So some of the feminines, if you, again, you know who the karmatic is, you might have been like, just do this or just do that. Da, da, da. It was too aggressive. It was too, um, it must be done right now. And it's like, especially if there's kids involved, like they just didn't know. Like They're like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> like, what are you, how am I supposed to just do this in the time frame you think it's supposed to be done in? And it might have made them try to rush something and it backfired. So they're like, and, and I feel like a lot of them, it's the secret. It's the wanting to tell you what the secret is and believing that there's a certain time for it and feeling like you're sensing it. And they're like, okay, every time I feel like she's sensing it, I pull back. And so that's the delay. You're sensing there's something I want to tell you and now I pull back. And that's the delay. And the heaviness of this energy when the feminine was waking up and starting to realize let me love me let me focus on me wish nothing but love on him understand the sacred union remember your love transforms them it started pulling them out of this fog they were in seeing you succeed motivates me to do better you low-key this card has a double meaning you low-key inspire me and you low-key admire me so the masculines at some point started doing something to shift the karmatics energy from off of them to come up out of it. And when they did that, feminines, because you started realizing the union, you felt that too. Another reason for those erotic spiritual pleasures, right? <laughs> and that remembering energy. You started feeling all these different changes. And, you know, you were still paying attention to yourself, working on self, getting your own energy in order, but you were keeping love, positivity, and prosperity on your masculine. They felt that and they were like, I see you being motivated. You're inspiring me. But at the same time, I know that, that some of this is also coming because you can feel me changing too. So it's like a balancing that started to take place, right? Divine feminines say, working with your higher self has really helped transmute transmute these heavy energies what i say about them heavy energies right so working on yourselves thinking positivity about each other motivated you both and it started breaking the chain that this karmatic had and that's why they're such a hater right now that's why they're like in a funk like oh can't believe Ugh. right 
those lessons are starting to be learned the masculines are starting to to wake up let's go to top of the deck for karmatic yeah see these karmatics want all the power all the power the, I feel like many of them is really just possessiveness. They don't even love the masculine, especially the ones that were in relationships with them. They prove that it's just like this. I had you. I own you. You're supposed to be mine kind of energy. Right. But the divine masculines, when we go to the bottom of the deck, are like, for lack of a, <laughs> I heard a bitch, please. <laughs> Girl, bye. <laughs> Some of you might have a, a, a divine masculine with like a really interesting sense of humor. <laughs> but they're starting to wake up, saving myself from the karmatic, remember? As the divine feminine loves her masculine, it transforms him. He starts waking up. You as the divine feminine working with their energy, it's really helped to transmute all that heaviness, right? The synchronicities of that let's go to the top and bottom of the yep look at that top of the deck this is for the twin flame vampire hunger friend you know the master cards of this this is the T I'm scared you might know my secret whatever that painful secret is that this karmatic knows about this masculine they're real they it's their most vulnerable thing and they really are afraid of you either learning about it in a messed up way i.e through the karmatic or they're afraid that they'll tell you and you'll cut them off or run from them or use it against them in an argument or a fight so whatever that is that's that's going to be one of the big breakthroughs that y'all need in this relationship however they want they want you despite the challenges. So even though that's a, a big challenge for them, they still want this to work. They still want this connection to take place. We'll go to the bottom of the deck for the Divine Feminines. Going along with that touching and erotic pleasures, we have, you're constantly on my mind, seducing my memories. Remember the Divine Masculine said, I need you to remember. <laughs> I need you to remember the lifetimes we've had. Remember all of that. <laughs> That's like a key thing that they want y'all to focus on. And then we also have from the Divine Feminist, hide and seek, come look for me, come chase me. So Divine Feminists aren't trying to hunt down these masculines yeah they want certain things to happen quickly and again that's a part of that timing thing but honestly it's like i feel like maybe at some point some of you feminists were the one trying to get the masculine to open up or just tell me what's going on or tell me who who this person is or what's happening here i know something's going on with your energy again for those of you who didn't know that they were dealing with a karmatic you felt that though like you felt it you were probably asking questions and so you're at the point where you're like you know what okay i'm gonna be over here <laughs> wishing all kinds of love on you and whatnot while working on me taking care of my self-care when you ready you come find me how about that <laughs> you you be the wolf and you come looking for me which is interesting because typically the wolf that scouts is actually the, the feminist <laughs> But roles are being switched here at this point. Okay. That's your reading, guys. So first and foremost, masculines really have to stand up to these karmatics. If it involves actually sitting down and planning, I mean, because when it involves kids, it's more sensitive. If it involves sitting down, talking with the divine feminine, planning what they can do how they can maybe legally because for some of you you might legally have to go about that or just standing up like not being affected is one of the biggest strong points when it comes to a karmatic they're used to getting under the skin right that's for that group for those who are dealing with a karmatic that they have a trigger on your masculine keep positive thoughts of him coming out of that trigger 
keep positive intents and prayers of him coming out of that trigger when you do your prayer speak it like it exists make a journal write it down like it's already happened he's not controlled by this anymore masculines watching who know that you have this secret your best bet is to tell your feminine before this karmatic does because this karmatic is a hater <laughs> to the core and she wants to snitch super bad so you can go through this awakening but as long as they feel like oh this person's pulling away and not being affected by me it's possible that they'll spill the beans on whatever that is it's best that it comes from you and not them divine feminines and masculines understand that timing is about when you're ready it, it's not about standing still and going i'm gonna just wait i'm gonna just wait that's not divine timing that's not no timing is about i'm working on myself i'm doing the things i need to do i'm transmuting these negative energies i'm stepping into my higher self and my higher power as that takes place automatically all of this will clear up it, it has no choice because there'll be no negative vibration for this karmatic to cling to you'll be learning your lessons and coming out of that karmatic situation but for as long as there's a hopscotch between trying to please the karmatic and keep the divine feminine and being territorial that timing that you feel the feminine is causing a delay to you'll be the key trigger to delaying it divine femmes don't worry about a timeline right now just focus on getting your energy together and again your masculines have free choice you just because they're your divine masculine they're your twin flame or your soulmate and or your soulmate that doesn't mean that you have to put up with their ish and that you have to be miserable and all that. No, get yourself together. Either they can match that frequency or they can't. And if they can't, the divine will facilitate your needs. Right. And for divine masculines dealing with feminines that are with karmatics, the same thing. Again, the energies here came out the way they came. But a, you know your situation. Only apply it where necessary. Take what resonates. Leave what doesn't putting blessings over your union putting clearing and cleansing out energy against this karmatic because they're a hater <laughs> they're just toxic like there's whatever the lesson is to learn here for the masculine it's definitely in, it, it's pretty intense because this is a clingy karmatic but they don't really care about the masculine it's just possession it's just to say i have him Right, I get the feeling when they were in a relationship, she probably treated him like shit the whole time. So that that's something that has to come out of his system. We're going to keep positive thoughts and energies on this. Peace, love, and light to you guys. Blessings.